While great examples of designing for mental health exist, we feel that the specific needs of both men and children are underserved by many digital products and services, which are designed for the masses. We want to solve this problem. The prevalence of mental health issues is steadily increasing among 5 to 15 year olds, but a recent Department for Education analysis found that of 90 schools that they looked at who had published online policies, only three of them had actually published policies on mental health. Not having a published policy doesn't necessarily mean that they don't care about the problem. Quite the opposite, they really do. They just don't have the resources or the dedication, the time to dedicate to it. Many schools do provide some form of mental health support and much of it falls into counselling, anger management classes, various interventions, but there are also some preventative things that they do, things like after school programmes and school farms, which also have been proven to have effect both in terms of mental, mental health and wellbeing and academic results. Research by the Priory Group in 2015 showed that 40% of men won't talk to anyone about their mental health. In England, around one in eight men live with a common mental health problem. However, the figures show that men are more reluctant to seek support for their mental health or even disclose mental health issues to loved ones. With, I've learned to deal with it, or I don't want to be a burden on anyone, or I'm just too embarrassed, being used as the common reasons that they don't open up. However, resources are limited for providing for these two groups. Teachers frequently have to put their hands in their pockets or conduct fundraising activity to pay for what they want to do. And the NHS spend on mental health was reduced by £34 million pounds last year. We want to try and improve the lives of millions of people through the brains of everyone at Foolproof. Please vote for this important issue so that we can solve this problem. Loneliness and social isolation have a detrimental impact on the well-being and health of anybody, but it's particularly a problem in the older generation where issues such as immobility, lack of transport and general isolation make it far harder problem to try and solve. And this means that we have alarming amount of people of the older generation that are living in this perpetual state of unhappiness caused by loneliness, whereas some social interaction could just actually help alleviate that. Whilst I was doing research into this social problem, I came across some really alarming statistics. For example, the detrimental impact on health that loneliness can cause is comparable to having 15 cigarettes a day. Um, 500,000 of the UK population of 75 and above won't see somebody for six days at a time. And the age group 75 and above have one of the highest rates of suicide. Our entire team will spend one day with one organization offering our design thinking and creative problem solving skills to facilitate ideation session, aiming to frame the problem of the impact of loneliness, understand the need of the elderly people in their areas, ideate solution, prototype ideas, and testing such ideas with the members of their community. We want to tackle social mobility, particularly the paths that we can create for young people at the end of school or the beginning of work. Poor social mobility means that however hard you try at school, however hard you work in your job, you won't have access to the same opportunities that people from wealthy and privileged backgrounds do. Social mobility in the UK has got worse every year for the past five years. The UK government's own 2019 report, the State of the Nation report, states these things. Number one, inequality is entrenched in Britain from birth to work. Number two, being born privileged means you're likely to remain privileged. And being born disadvantaged means you're going to have barriers to overcome to improve yours and your children's social mobility. And number three, urgent action needs to be taken to help close the privilege gap. We believe we all have a responsibility to break the poverty cycle. Historically, we've looked to schools to help improve social mobility, but with funding so tight, 
it's, they just don't have the resources to be able to make any real progress on this issue. Um, we might look at creating new web networks of support and mentoring for young people. We could rethink how work experience and internships work. We could think about communications ideas for students, parents, teachers, employers um, to help them understand what it will take to help change things for good. Uh, there's lots that we could go at and so please vote for us uh, to help create new ideas that will tackle this huge problem and if, and if you'd like to work with us on it then please yeah, get in contact and offer your support. Thank you.